Clap it up. True. And that's where the music is. Clap it up, man. That's a, a trailer from the documentary, the anthem premiere Wednesday, June 28th. We got two people here. I'm going to let you do the honors of the first one, BB. Yes. I'm a huge fan of this guy. I mean, he's... He's family here. He's, yeah, he he's is. been here a couple times, and we've had some magical moments every time he comes by, whatever he's promoting, and um, it's lovely to have him back. And I think bigger than the work that he has contributed, I think it's also uh, commendable that he's reaching back and helping people bring them up, you know what I mean, and putting people on who are also great at what they do. And with us right now is, uh, like I said, a family member here, Swain Des Moines and Ryan Coogler, and he's brought Peter Nix, the guy who is the producer and director of this awesome documentary premiering on Hulu Wednesday, June 28th. Peter Nix and Ryan Coogler are here. Go give him a big round of applause. Yeah, what's up, y'all? Ryan's no strange. Ryan's family now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ryan could go get some. Ryan, go get some waters, man. <laughs> I, 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 easy. <laughs> Y'all want, want a sensu or, or a sparkling? Yeah, yeah. Give me a sparkling, man. With a little flavor on it. A little lime in that. Some, okay, um, <laughs> Ryan. It's always good to have you, brother. I can't express enough how proud I am and inspired by you. I get goosebumps when I see you, um, being that we're from the same place. And then you brought along this man. I want to say by way of Boston. Did you tell me? That's right. By way of Boston, who's done a lot of work where he's highlighted. Um, just a lot of issues that take place in um, Oakland, California. He did a, a, a documentary called The Force uh, where he talked about um, going into the OPD, right? He did a, a documentary called Homecoming. Homeroom. I mean, excuse me, Homeroom, where he went to my alma mater, Oakland High, and showed what it's like to be a student um, at Oakland High during that time, during COVID. That's crazy. You went to Oakland High. <laughs> I went to Oakland High, brother, and you did mm. the waiting room. Uh, which my mother from about Highland Hospital, which is right down the street from where I grew up, and it's where my mother worked for 35 years before she retired, and my grandmother worked there as well. Mm -hmm. I used to walk to Highland Hospital on my way to Oakland High and borrow, like, not borrow, but get lunch money at 25, 35, 45 cent. Man, you have fat pockets with 45 cent, in your, <laughs> you know, at that time. Right. So I want to commend you for your work and definitely uh, putting the spotlight on Oakland, both of you guys. We're happy to have them yeah. here. Happy to have him Welcome, here. Yeah, thanks, thank y'all for having me. Ryan, I promised the listeners that I'll go to them first. Okay, so they'll get a chance to get a get a question in. All right, we got Mike from Florida on the line. Mike, go ahead. What's up, Mike? Mike. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up, y'all? What's up, Heather B? Much love. It's my friend of our beach. Uh, I wanted to ask the twenty three year special ops in the military. What kind of military perspective and inspiration did you get? right in the new anthem because it's such a different mm -hmm. perspective of someone that's been in war that's lost people that's held them in their arms when they die and the national anthem represents so much more than a song when we've been in those situations so i just wanted to see you know what kind of inspiration motivation they gave y'all while doing this and i also wanted to say if y'all need some new custom shoes, I got those for you to go with the anthem. I love it. <laughs> okay. You want to take, you want me to take that? Yeah. Yeah, no, thanks for the question. Um, y y you know, one of the challenges that we faced immediately when, you know, this, this provocative idea of if you were to imagine a, a national anthem for today, yeah. what would that be and, and how would you do it? We, we immediately knew that we would have to have multiple perspectives mm -hmm. in, in that the original anthem was written by by one man francis scott key it was it was set to the music that was british you know parlor music mm -hmm. um at, at the time roy wood jr has a funny bit at the beginning of the, the film that i saw that i saw <laughs> it's it, like, yeah. like that's crazy roy was like you uh, you beat their asses <laughs> yeah. and then you make a song based on theirs exactly yeah, right <laughs> exactly yeah. so, so so stepping um into the space of who whose perspectives should, should represent a new anthem we knew that we we needed diverse perspectives and stories and so we we went on this road trip where we found sort of like you know chris and dahi went on this road trip jammed with musicians from all over the country in different styles blues country uh, you know latin music native american music and when we were in nashville we met uh, a young woman named charity bowden uh -huh. who, whose family um, going back generations is, is in the military and her perspective um, was that she loved this song was very important to her the original you know the, the anthem that we, 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 we know today 
and that perspective uh, ultimately informed the lyrics that that came into the the new anthem. Mm -hmm. That that her community was one in, in which so many people uh, served in the military, died, you know, for the for the country, and and that value was important to her in this new song. So that that her perspective was part of the story. Wow, uh, Mike, thanks for your call, brother. I appreciate you, man. You're a yeah. super citizen, right? Yes, you are. I sway in the morning. I was reading. You guys, we, we had these conversations way back when uh, Colin Kaepernick uh, was under fire, you know, um, a lot for taking a knee. And we start going over just these traditional songs from our country and, and what did the lyrics actually say. And in this particular one, in the third, is it the stanza? Stanza, yeah. yeah the third, third stanza. stanza. Hireling and the Slave. Yeah, what it says, and where is that band who sold... Uh, where is that band who so vauntingly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more? Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. The refuge could save the harrowing and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the star-spangled banner and triumph do it wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. This was written by... A former slave owner right and so this star spangled banner as a descendant of those who were enslaved um doesn't seem like that was written for us mm -hmm. for me at least it, is that one of the reasons is that how the idea came about to do a whole nother new anthem well p well partly we, we I, I had actually been looking at a couple of projects that, mm -hmm. that that i was um one of them actually was a cap kaepernick pro project that that is examining this collision of a patriotism and protest and in the process examining the narrative the the core narrative and the origination of the narrative not just the story but the perspective like who is the teller mm -hmm. and i think that 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 fact is so important in the notion of national narrative and any film or story or poem or music uh, that 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 we have sometimes that uh Found the foundation of who told the stories, and it's important to understand that person's story. Yeah, because that adds to uh, the dimension of your understanding of the intention behind the song and the meaning behind behind the song. And so we we you know we knew that um, that that we need to inquire a into the history. And, and there was originally maybe a, a deeper historical film mm -hmm. that that could have been made mm -hmm. about looking at the national anthem and yeah. the history of the anthem and the yeah. uh, and the lyrics and the third stanza and all that but that quickly gave way to this sort of more forward looking idea of creating a new anthem and going on a journey going on a road trip to discover and find uh, a new perspective man all right we got peter nix is here ryan coogler is here hold up we got anthony from buffalo on the line anthony go ahead what's up, Ant? Ant? What's up Ant? Oh, man, my stomach is doing backflips right now. I'm on the phone with Ryan Coogler. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? So, you know, my program's the Wakanda Lions. I've called in a bunch of times. I'm a super citizen, proud to say that. Uh -huh. nice. um, so, so what Black Panther did for us here in Buffalo, New York, is after the movie, we started our program where we're teaching young people about um, African ancestry and, and Black futurism and Afrofuturism, why all these things are important. Some people get a DVD with the bonus features, we're like, no, we're, we're the bonus features. We're going to bring this information to our people, to our young people, and to their families, not just to young people, to the, but to their families, right? So what kind of lines, that's our program. But uh, my question for Ryan Coogler and Mr. Peter Nix is how do we keep these conversations going after these movies come out? You know, how do we uh, get them in schools? How do we get young people attracted to these ideas, you know, that's beyond social media and whatnot? Are there any ideas on that? Good question. Oh, I'll kick it off by saying we we've created like a, like a provocative idea, and one of the things that we discovered in the making of this this anthem is the insight that maybe there can't just be one anthem, or or that our anthems mm -hmm. can be reimagined and repurposed and re re re, re expressed in, in specific ways that continue that that story. And so this notion of you know taking a song and and handing it over to the people is, is part of what we've done here. And we worked really hard to allow this song to be in the public domain. We worked with This Machine Filmworks to make sure 
that this song is available to the people to reimagine, repurpose. Maybe there's a TikTok challenge <laughs> that we uh-huh. could uh, we I could, like could do, that. I like that. Yeah. and and, and that can like allow that. the story to sort of right. evolve and continue. Yeah, I, I think um, to answer your question, and thanks for the support and all the kind words. And, and um, I haven't been to Buffalo yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I experience Buffalo mostly through Griselda these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and, yep. and and but but yeah, bro, I um it seemed like seemed like a uh, like a amazing city, a resilient city, you know what I'm saying? So big shout outs and thanks for the support. Um I think that it's really up to the audience. Like like, you know, us as filmmakers, you know, what we do is we is we make the thing and then once we're done with it, you know, um and, and, and once it's delivered to the audience, we don't own it anymore. You know what I mean? You guys own it now. Um, and, and 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 what you guys what you guys do with it determines how long it it lives in the in the consciousness, you know. Um, uh, and 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 what we did with this film, which is, which I think was incredible. I think only Pete could could make this film. Hopefully, we get to talk a little bit more about his background and 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 how he came up. But it's what makes him such a special filmmaker who can who can go into uh, uh, issues that'll be hot button that people might be afraid of. He can come out on the other end with the. With the film that's that's positive and motivating, um, but what's great about this is, you know, this, this this doc, you know, even though it it does take a look at the anthem with with a with a, um an honest eye with a critical eye, um, it's not just about looking back and and, and saying, hey man, this, this this doesn't work for this reasons. It actually looks forward, and and you and you get to see, uh, folks make something. You know what I mean? Make an attempt at at, at something that that people could use. You know, once the film is over with. You know, um, and I think what they made is a song that's incredibly special, uh, that brings in a lot of different perspectives. The lyrics are written by four women, you know, um, which is you know like you know which is compared to, to to that to that first anthem that's written by um, by one guy, yep. you know, um, ex sla- uh, slave owner. That part. Yeah, okay. yeah, and, yeah. There you go. <laughs> and, and, and so, so I think that I think that um, it's, it's it's looking forward and it's active. It's an active film. You know what I'm saying? And 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 for that, I think. You know, I hope that it inspires people to go. If you watch the end credits, you know, um, which are beautiful, you see a bunch of people from different backgrounds, you know, making their own versions of the song already. You know the, what I mean? The Oakland High Band was one of those. The Oakland High Band, ah. yeah. Yeah. The Oakland High Wildcats Band. That's right. Go Wildcats! Yeah. Wow. And and, and and so and so so <laughs> for, for, for the team. You know, for, for the, the thing, to answer your question, the number one thing an audience can do is to make it their own. You know, once they make it their own, man, it, you know, it, it's, it's uh, it can go a lot further than we can make it go as filmmakers. Hey, and good question, man. We appreciate you. You super citizen, man. A sway in the morning. Ryan, you mentioned women and credits and everything like that, and we noticed here that your wife actually has a credit as an executive producer. Didn't and he? for me, I think that's so dope. Um, Can you tell us her role in all of this and how that came about? Yeah, she got a massive role. Um, she So, so when we started Proximity Media, it was um it was Zinzi, myself, and our good friend Savak Ohanian. Um, and... and you know, Zinzi's been there from the jump. Mm-hmm. For me, in my career as a filmmaker, she we, we were together before I knew I wanted to make movies. Right. And she was the first person to believe in the idea of me doing that. Mm. Um, and she's an incredible filmmaker, a great producer. Um, and, and she was she was there every step of the way with this. You know, you know, it was it was and and, and our role in this was just supporting Pete's vision. You right. know, it was it was what can we do to make it happen. Um, at, at Proximity Media, our 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 goal is to. Um, bring audiences closer to, to stories that are often overlooked um, and through eventized content. Right. So so for us, it was about, you know, how do we make this an event? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and encouraging Pete to be bold um, and ambitious, which is not a problem for Pete, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, um, but, Pete. But, but, but asking, you know, constantly asking, how can we make this more bold? How can we make this more ambitious? You know, how can we how can we bring audiences in even more? And, and Zen, you know, leads the charge in, in those conversations. That's so dope. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank I'm you. so excited to support this with my eyes, with yeah. my full attention, with sharing. Um, I see this also becoming a musical. I don't know what it is, but it gives me Hamilton energy yep. as well. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward to it being reimagined in that way. Um, Stephen Capel Jr. Oh yeah, your guy ride was with us last week and number one, number one. Come on, number one in the box office. Yeah. Transformers, let's go! Number one, wow, <laughs> huge feat. Numero uno, let's go. We lost, we lost yeah. competition, and then, and, then if, and if I ain't been looking at the at the at, the, at deadline, man, and, and and we got a massive writer strike going on right now. Um, I'm, I'm a member of that guild. Big shout out to the to the writers that's on the picket lines. Mm-hmm. Amen. Um, but 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 yeah, I think if 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 Roger the Beast is number one, and Spider Verse is number two, domestically, that's that's two, that's two uh, uh, 
uh, films directed by by black folks, about black about black and, and, and um, Latino folks. Um, that's that's uh, leading the charge in the summer, man. It's crazy. Yeah. So, so what a time to be alive. Hell yeah. But but Cape was a great guy, man. Good friend, good friend of ours, man. Went to film school with him, oh, out, wow. out of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, young. Mm-hmm. And, and just and just doing his thing. Yeah. yeah, I bring him up because uh, he mentioned a unique way that he's been able to connect with his actors is he took acting classes himself just so he could like be in their shoes and really understand the more intimately the role they have. So that made me curious. I know obviously you're producing this film, mm-hmm. Ryan, but um, both of y'all are directors. Do you guys have any like unique or standout ways that have helped you to like bond with your actors and have strength in your leadership as directors? Well, it's a, it, it's a different process. The, the actors in a, in a fiction film are almost in, in some ways like subjects of of a documentary or you know you have to develop trust you have to develop a relationship a common language with documentary what i and my, my career sort of built on very immersive cinema verite observational films um mm-hmm. with no narration no interviews um just allowing people's lives to unfold before the camera and before i film i usually spend often months with people um talking sometimes without the camera sometimes with the camera mm-hmm. developing uh, that sort of relationship or cultural competency i tend to pick and be drawn to subjects and spaces where i already have a connection my wife worked at highland highland hospital oh, um, sure. and that's what sort of hurt yeah. the stories that she brought home to me about her patient population mm. the journey that they were going through the caregivers and how they were trying to care for this community that did not have health insurance right. drew me to that to, to that space. But sometimes I, I don't like the Oakland Police Department. I'm not a cop. I don't have cops in my family. Um, it, it's a space of deep distrust. How, how the police see the media, how the community sees sees the police, Talk about and it. that required me to to go in there and spend a lot of time just you know telling my story hearing their story, um, and, and that that's the foundation. Mm-hmm. He won a Sundance Directing Prize for uh, The Force, right? Yes, I did. Thank you. Come on, man. Let me stunt <laughs> for you, brother. <laughs> that was crazy. I'm going to stunt for you. Let me stunt for you. Come on, man. You've been repping the town big time, man. Yo, Ryan, I don't know if you know this, man. I know this has nothing to do with what we're talking about today, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you, brother, because I see this. I have a vision of this in one of your movies coming up. They did a mural on International Boulevard and High Street. I'm on a mural now. Oh, that's big. Come yeah. on, Brian. Come on. Mural, man. Come on, Pete. I got to oh, go yeah. see that, man. Congratulations, oh, yeah. sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I feel like the mural can serve as maybe like a background shot in a film. Man, you might got to work that out. I can out. see it. Let's do yeah. that. I mean, it's a lot getting made at the crib, too, man. So, yeah. like, a lot. Yeah, like, um, it's been, it's been, a, it's been, it's been 10 years since I shot there. You know? Oh really? Oh, yeah. Wow! Wow! Yeah. It's been ten. As a person, as a director, yeah. I mean, Pete, the, the, we got a film about Steph Curry that'll come out. Yeah. In a, in a, in a um, in a month and a half or so. Mm-hmm. Underrated. And, yeah, yeah. And, and that and that film is shot all over Oakland, right? Mm-hmm. But, but but me personally, it's been a while. Um, mm. but but it's a lot. It's a lot being shot there. Like a lot of a lot of great stuff being shot there. You got blind spotting. Mm-hmm. You got um, you know, you got freaky tales that's gonna come out mm-hmm. fairly soon. Ryan Fleck and Anna Bolden. I'm a Virgo. Uh, Virgo, oh, yeah, yeah boots, 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 boots all over that thing. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. boots all over that thing, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blind, big shout, out, big shout out to Boots. Yeah, blind spotting. But it's and, a great stage. Oakland is a remarkable stage. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's one of the most diverse cities in, in, in America. That's what, partly so what true. drew me drew me to it. I'm a mixed mixed race kid. I married a refugee from 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 Laos, and that oh, wow. that beauty and that kaleidoscopic sort of diversity also brings with it problems, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and challenges. And so it's such a microcosm of America. It's a, it's a sort of local story that's also has issues that are reflecting that we're grappling with nationally, that, which mm-hmm. makes it a great stage for storytelling. Well yeah. said. Yeah. yeah, it's a good fertile ground for creativity. Ryan, you at the you you at the forefront of that. A lot of what you were able to accomplish at the heights that you've been able to do it, we didn't see that kind of representation. And so you you're a big catalyst to what we're seeing in Oakland right now. So, so salute to you. It's 50th anniversary of hip hop. 
But I know we. I feel like we might have. And the 50th anniversary of me too. Now. You know, this your birthday too. I'm actually 55. I'm. A... Oh shit, damn man. <laughs> Tried to cheat. That's all right, Pete. Man, you could be 50 again. You could be 50, P. Reimagine. I claim it. I claim it. I'm going backwards now. Once I, once I hit 50, I start going backwards. Down, down. Yeah, Benjamin Button. So I'm actually Button 45. Did it. Yeah, Benjamin Button did it. You can do it. Deduct the COVID years too. Okay. That's right, um, right. Ryan, how much has hip hop written some of the movies, some of your work? How much has hip hop influenced? How you wrote? Jesus, man. I mean, fifty years too. I'm, man. I'm, I'm, I'm 37. Yeah. So, so I, I was born into a world that where where hip hop existed. You know, like so. It's, it's my, my prism for seeing the world is through, it's it's through that lens. Like mm -hmm. I, I, wow, I, yeah. I, I, I often, I often will, um, write something and say I want this to be. I want this to make the audience feel how I felt when I listened to um, "If I Die Tonight," damn, you know, mm -hmm. or, or 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 shed so many tears, mm -hmm. um, or or you know, like in, in in so so it's literally the the prism to how I see the world, man. I, I spent some time with Spike while I was here. Spike Lee, I, I, yeah, I went to go see him. Man, 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 oh, that's you know, a stunt. I, no. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I got like it's certain people whenever you're in New York, you gotta you gotta see them. Yeah, pull up. Gotta tap in, yeah. man. I try to respect them OG rules. You know what I'm saying? Tap and it up. and it was the same when 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 John was alive. Singleton, rest in peace. You know, like when you when you got a shot at seeing them dudes, you go see them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. they always gonna give you they always gonna give you something. And um and, and spending time with him, man, is just realizing like you know <laughs> my brother my brother who's a musician, OG Dave. Um, he he was born in 1990, and he asked Spike. He said, "Hey, Spike, are you a sneakerhead?" While we was hanging out, and Spike just froze. He was like, "He was like, what?" He's like, "How could you ask me that, man? I'm the reason the shit blew up." <laughs> 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 me, me and Mike, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, 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 and I, and I, I, That's I, real I, though. And I was just thinking, I was thinking <laughs> about how him, how you know, and, black. and do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, he he stopped the movie when they, when the, when the, when the, when the gentrifier stepped on. Bugging out shoe, uh -huh. and they had a whole scene back and forth about the shoe, and it was mm -hmm. a microcosm for gentrification, and, and 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 it was a it was a, you know, it was a little bit of a plant for what was coming later on in the later, later on in the film, and, and and just like, I was born into that world, bro. yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 I, I another story for me is man. I remember one day, um, I was watching um, Men in Black the video, mm -hmm. you know, uh, was, and, I, and I asked my mom, I say, Mom, hey, why is Will Smith always trying to rap? <laughs> oh shit! And she said, and she, and she looked at me. She was like, she was like, because he was a rapper first, you idiot. <laughs> like, I'm like, Damn. I'm like what? That's oh my god! Yeah. You know it, it, why you know, always trying to rap? Yeah. I was like, man, he always making these nah. movies, but then he do a song. What's, what's going on? That's real. And then, and she, she, was like, she was like, she was like, he was a rapper. He was a rapper first. You dumb, dumb. I was like, really? <laughs> Yo, that's just like, he was like, he was acting to me. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? And, and just, just because that's. So I came into the I came into the world where where where, where hip hop was the reality, yeah. And, and it was, you know, like since since Jay, Jay Z talk about this was one oh six man. Like mm -hmm. I, I grew up listening to you, right? Mm -hmm. I grew up one oh six was our station. Came yeah. Came yeah. <laughs> and and it was one rock song that got played on there, bro. Mm -hmm. If you remember, it was it was Teen Spirit. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the only. That was that yeah. was the only, and that shit was great. Yeah. And after that, man, it was all rap, bro. Yeah. Like you know, and that was wow. and it was so. So I grew up thinking that rap was the thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop was that was that was what people listened to. Yeah. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? And, and and um, it was regional for us, but but I mean, it it shaped my whole way of life, bro. Yeah. It shaped everything. So like when I when I hear hip hop fifty, you know. It puts it in perspective. It puts it in perspective. For real, you know. Wow. Damn, look at that, man. Now, look, look what hip hop did. Yeah, it's crazy. Come on, I love it, man. I love hearing these stories, man. DB, you want to jump in? Yeah, real quick. Um, I want to go back to. There's a point in the doc where um, I forgot the character. Uh, I'm sorry, not character. The the person's name. Uh, when they asked, um, what is it you want to hear out of this anthem? And he said the truth. Mm. And I almost feel like truth can be subjective at this point in time. Yep. Because some people might feel, you know, that's their beliefs that don't align with everybody else's, but that's what they believe. So in, in the making of this doc and coming up with the idea to do it, how did you decide on whether, how are you going to approach 
those beliefs and the truths to those people that don't necessarily fit with, I guess, the overall narrative of what you wanted the new national anthem to represent? I, I, I think it's a leaning into the optimism that, that we can change our opinions, even with regard to what, what the truth is, whatever that is, neuroplasticity or cultural you know, evolution. Um, it has happened, you know, you know, and there was the moment in the, in the film where um, one of the artists in, in Clarksdale, Mississippi, she talked about her, her, her love for the, the flag, the Mississippi flag. Um, and when presented with the, the idea of changing it and in the context of the narrative of the history of that flag, found a way to, to change her um, and, and, the, and the entire state. And now there's, the, there's a new state flag for, for, for Mississippi. And so not, not that we were saying that, you know, the, Nash, the Star Spangled Banner needs to change, um, but that there is, we need to have a framework for people to have a path to change. We all change, you know, for, for good and bad. You know, and I think right now we're in a, in a, in a very feels like locked in locked in place where we can't those truths are, are clanging against each other and have no way of melding but I, I you know it's the reason why i got into storytelling is that the power of storytelling is the power to change and i, I believe in that strongly and i also believe in the power of music and the power of our, our collective voice there's something about music that allows us to see each other in a more full way Musically, you got Chris Bowers, who uh, did Bridgerton when they see us and King Richard, and you got one of the most celebrated hip hop producers mm. of our time with Dahi, with Kendrick Lamar, Mac Miller, uh, Dr. Dre, uh, Travis Scott, Drake. Uh, I could just name 50 people this dude has worked with. And I think it's something kind of poetic that this new country's anthem, as I call it, is written by someone who comes from our culture and community, right? Mm. Um, how how did y'all select these two? I've known Chris for for, for a while. We worked together briefly on on the Force. Uh -huh. um, he was originally going to be the composer of, of that film. Um, the schedules didn't work out, but I, I immediately sort of like the same experience I had when I met Ryan, which was th this was someone special, you know, someone who had a, had a, had a gift and, and a voice, and I just stayed in touch with him. And when this idea came up, he was the first person I thought of. Like, if if I were to have one person who could be the musical mm -hmm. director mm -hmm. of this idea, it would be it would be Chris Bowers. Um, and then, at the same time, I was joining. Ryan invited me to join the company to run the nonfiction division. Uh, one of the co-founders of the company is Archie Davis. Mm -hmm. And and Archie, when we were looking for a producer, that was my first call was to Archie. And Archie, I, I didn't know who da he was. Yeah, um, I knew his music. I knew uh -huh. his work. You didn't know he did it. I, I didn't know yeah. the persona of of, of Dahi. Yeah, um, and Archie uh, was like, "Yo, you, you need to you need to talk to Dahi," uh -huh. and, and that's how that process began. And Chris Chris happened to know Dahi, and and it all just fell into place. Yeah, we, and we got Ludwig Jonsson, who um who who who's a composer who I met in film school, and and, and runs the music division of, of Proximity with Archie. Also is um is also as good friends with both of them, both mm -hmm. Chris and and Dahi. Um, we we actually Zinzi and I spent a, a bunch of time with Dahi at, at Louis's wedding, um, and uh you know just just a really just a really great guy, man, and 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 um so skilled, you know, so very very skilled, man. Uh, and 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 him and him and Chris together, you know, um, and then the writers that 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 Pete and those guys found, man, all, those, those women, yeah. Represent like you know, kind of every, every, every you know, it's not every single perspective, but I, but I think that like most perspectives, um, could could line up with at least one of them. Uh -huh. You know, uh, so interesting. Um, and 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 I think that it was interesting to see this 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 jazz this jazz composer, you know, um, and this and this record producer, uh, kind of go on an investigation of what is American music, uh -huh. mm -hmm. you know? Um, I'm big on getting to the root of things, you know, uh, just as a filmmaker. And you ask, like, how, you know, um, how do I work with, with actors or what have you? And I, and I think for, for, for me, um, it's always about the root, you know? It's always about getting getting down to like the getting down to like the to like the the the, the, the basics of somebody's identity and who uh -huh. they and who they are. Mm -hmm. 
And as soon as Roy says, hey, yo, it's a British drinking song, it's like, wait a second, that's, that's the wrong route, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, that, that's not, that's, that's, I, don't, I don't know if that's the right way to go. You know? Yeah, right. yeah, a British you know? drinking song. Wait a minute. Let's detour. That's, that's not where I always start as a creative, you know what I'm, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and, and um, it's a very proud country, mm-hmm. you know, just, 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 just culturally, you know what I'm saying? Even in the microcosms, man, like, it's who prouder than a New Yorker, right? Yeah. You know Facts. what I'm saying? Like, who... Who more certain about where they are as being the greatest place? You know what I'm, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, and and even in that, it, it felt it feels like it didn't totally line up. Yeah. You know what, I'm, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, mm-hmm. so so now these guys go on this investigation, you know, um, in this journey, in, in, a, in a Ford Mustang, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know what I'm like, <laughs> you know, um, across the heartland and, and, and meeting folks, and, and these writers that they found, man, I think really communicated some something truthful. Yeah. It's it, it's the wrong route, and what we what we found in the beginning of the process of researching the movie because we looked at all these versions of the national anthem that are iconic, mm. you know, yeah. Ho- Jose, Fel- some of which I was familiar with, and some of which I wasn't not as much. Jose Feliciano, uh-huh. Marvin Gaye, uh-huh. Jimi yeah. Hendrix, Whitney Houston. Yeah, some of the most iconic versions of the Star Spangled Banner are by people of color, right. and the reason why that those they're they're, they're so iconic is because they they recognize sort of I think naturally that 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 route. Is sort of disconnected from their own personal experience and their own, mm-hmm. own cultural story, and they layer onto the song that cultural story and that that voice, and that's what makes makes made those versions of the anthem so special. Mm-hmm. Ryan Coogler is here. Peter Nix is here. Yes. Uh, the new documentary uh, is called The Anthem. It's premiering Wednesday, June twenty eighth on Hulu. So. Both you, Ryan, and Peter have said some things that made me think about the conversation we had last week with Samuel Jackson. Mm. Um, he said two things. One, he couldn't figure out why Nick Fury hasn't visited Wakanda yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he wanted to know that. He, yo, he did ask that, Ryan. He did say that. <laughs> yeah. And the second... I love, I love, man, that dude was great. He is great. <laughs> He's great. And the second thing was, he talked about Tupac. Uh-huh. And he said... Like one of the things that people didn't realize, as great as an artist Tupac was, a, a rapper in music, Tupac did the training and the work. He went to a performing arts school. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the acting thing with him was a real thing. Yeah. How important for you both um, going to film school? Is it, does it separate directors? You know, you hear a lot of people, you pick up the camera and you start mm-hmm. making movies. How mm-hmm. important, in y'all opinion, is film school? I mean, it, it, it depends. You, you have examples of people like I like, know, like, like like went to film school. Then you have people like like Tarantino <laughs> didn't go, didn't go to film school. Yeah. So, That's so, why I asked. Yeah, yeah. It, it, for me, it just provided a, a space for exploration. It, it provided a, a, a community for me, and that community was was very powerful. It did provide opportunity for me mm. for, for work. The first job I got coming out of uh, film school was was working on a big documentary with Lowell Bergman on, for, for Frontline on the war oh, on wow. drugs. Okay, and so th- th- those opportunities came from you know, cool. connections you know uh were, were invaluable to me I, I think it depends on the type of person you know um there's so many things written on this and, and talked about you got like a real popular one with um malcolm gladwell where he talks about the ten thousand hour rule in a book called outliers mm-hmm. um and and, and I, I think that that education can be formal um it, it can also be professional you know what I'm. You know what I mean. Like, like uh, you have people who, um, somebody like Paul Thomas Anderson, um, who 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 very famously. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know Paul personally that well, but I know the story, the story about him is he applied to NYU, got in, it wasn't right for him, and he left mm-hmm. when 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 started making his movies. But 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 his family was a, was a, was a show business family. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like he saw he saw I believe his father you know mm-hmm. working in the industry, so he was around it for hours and hours and exposed to it mm. almost through osmosis and lived in LA, you know what I'm saying? And was and was around it and was seeing it. So, you know, that person didn't necessarily need school. You know, I've seen interviews with Tarantino who famously didn't go to film school, talk about him working in a video store. Yeah. And like, and like watching yeah. VHS yeah. is like every day to the point that he developed like an encyclopedic knowledge of, of cinema. It's a form of education. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not mm-hmm. it's not formal. He didn't pay tuition, but he paid with time, right? Mm-hmm. You know um, I don't know anybody who's great at something that didn't work at it for a long time. A long time. You know, yeah. um, I don't know any. I don't know anybody who breaks that rule. That's kind of yeah. like the common. You, know, you have people who have, who are just naturally gifted, like savant level or, mm-hmm. or uh, product prodigy. That as soon as they pick it up, they take to it. But before you hear about them, usually, unless it's like a story being done on this kid who can do X, Y, and Z, 
when you buying their stuff, when they being exposed to you professionally, they've usually been at it for a while. Yeah. You know. Um, so I think I think it's about putting the time in, whether or not the academic setting works for you. That's that's about you as a person, I think. You know what yeah. I'm saying? For me, I, I like school. So it works for me. Um, but but you know, not everybody who's great at something is, is great at school. school. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah it point. is. Good point, man. Give these gentlemen a round of applause. Yes. We got a new anthem. We got a new national anthem. Thank God. We have a new national anthem, <laughs> citizens. This is it. I'm tired of singing that other stuff. It's over 200 years old. How long are we supposed to sing that? Yeah. That's a good question. It's Never written in it. old, a version of English that we don't even understand. Mm -mm. We have a new anthem. We have a new anthem. Where, do you have it with y'all, or what's the deal? Man, you got to tune in. Oh. Ah, <laughs> 28, 28. It's coming, and it's, it's beautiful. Coming. It's beautiful. Man, what's the name of the, what's the, name of the, the choir of Shane that live? Sing, like, Sing Harlem. Sing Harlem. Sing Harlem did it? Sing Harlem. I think oh, they're an evolution. They? Well, you know, Harlem Boys Choir, I think, oh. is no longer, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. But they, this is an organization wow. that we found that, that has been doing work. They're on uh, America's Got Talent. Okay, and uh, is it is it called the anthem or what are we calling it? Oh, I mean, you want you want to give them the title? Is that it? No. Yeah, we can give them the title. Give it to them. Yeah, we are America. We are America. Damn it, you heard it. Okay. <laughs> we are America. Damn we. It, you heard it. It's not a singular. <laughs> it's a plural uh -huh. pronoun. We are America. That means everybody under the sun is a part of America, right? We talking equality. We talking equity. We are a part of a, We are America. That's the name of it? That's right. I like that. Who came up with that title? I think it was a collective effort. Nothing you know, we, we had one of our America. writers was, um, we were blessed. One of our writers was Joy Harjo. Okay. The first Native American United States Poet Laureate. Wow. wow. And yeah, it was a powerful room. These 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 y four women. Y'all not selling this. Y'all did it right. Y'all not selling this well enough, man. That that should have been said in the front. <laughs> you, what, what are we doing here? I'm screaming. We are America at the tail end of the interview. I yeah. should have been we screaming like to this. It. We like to unpack it. Okay, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Filmmakers, you know, right. yeah, you know, they got a climax exactly. at the end. I get it. I get it. That's yeah. what they do. I get it. It's the third act. It's the third act. <laughs> <laughs> the finale. Um, well, congratulations, Ryan. You know we love you. Yeah, um, I appreciate it. Love too. I can't wait to see what's next. We're gonna focus on this today, though. Uh, Peter, you do outstanding work. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, brother. I'm glad I, I came across you. your work organically. Thank you, man. Wow, man. Yeah, I love it, man. Congratulations. There's no, there's no coincidences. Nah. You know, it wildcat. Ain't. Wildcat, you come know. on, man. All right. Oakland High, baby. I went to Merritt College, too. Y'all going to do something oh, for me? Oh, <laughs> Merritt. Man, yeah. maybe. Come on. I used to eat that Merritt chicken. Come on, that Merritt chicken was popping, Ryan. Come on, boy. Are you oh, taking me back? Right are you now, talking about Merritt Bakery chicken? <laughs> oh, Merritt Bakery. Oh, Merritt Bakery. Chicken. My brother. Ryan remembered the chicken. My brother. Yo. I was there, my brother. Yo. The way his head tilted up, he said, I ate that chicken. Yo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Man, we eat, we eat, we eat that bag, bro. I, I, you know. We'll get y'all around for y'all money out here. Come on, man. Mary Bakery Chicken yes, was bondiculous. Chicken at a bakery <laughs> is crazy. New word right there. Yeah, it was, it was at, a at a bakery. And they I, stayed. I, I, was you at Emma's ever? I went to Emma's, yeah. Bro, come, come on, on man. Yeah, these places don't exist. No, you know, Auckland been ravaged, man. Damn. Yo, you but, ever eat at Taste of New Orleans? Of course. What? Oh, yeah. Come, come on. on. Yeah. Yeah. Local conversation happening. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> of course. People in Oakland right now listening at Hawk and they hoard. They know what they know. From a certain era. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah and we two different age, but I might go too deep if I say if I say Piper's smorgasbord. Nah, yes, yeah, too deep. That's too deep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you went. Okay. No, I, let me bring it up. Why Smith keep rapping? Okay, I, was, I was born when I was born. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't take a person. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's okay, it. let me bring it. Let's connect. Let's yeah. reconnect. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, you look like you ate quick ways. 100% my daddy worked at quick ways. Your daddy worked at quick ways? Yeah. I used to work at quick ways. Yeah. Which, by the lake or in the I east? Went to, on the east. The one yeah. on by the ville. Oh, oh. Pop, yeah. Ooh. See? Ooh. 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 <laughs> by that village. Your Man. pops worked at which one? My pop worked at the one by the lake. That's the luxury quick ways. It was. Uh, yeah, he had a good my time. Pop, my pop was from the east. I don't think he could work at the, at the one by the view. Nah, he, <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been able to sell yeah. no food, bro. They robbed oh, us man. every first and 15th. Uh -huh. yeah. That was, might have been, no, that wasn't the last job I had. That was the second to last job I, I had. And them hot fries, boy. But come on, man. <laughs> they had a nice half chicken, too. Yeah. 
I ate so it wait, all, you bro. still doing the diet challenge? Like, are you talking right. about all this <laughs> chicken and fried food? I mean, like, this, 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 this the 90s we talking about, Ali, <laughs> man. I ain't ate it since the 90s. Yeah, it's sure. Cool, man. Let me see. Y'all off the chain, our hero. Let me think. I'm gonna hit Tatiana before I leave, bro. What you trying to hit? Yeah. Oxtails, I heard. Oxtails? Okay. All right, man. Thank you, Ryan. I love that, man. I ain't got nobody to talk to. I ain't got nobody to talk to about this shit. Hey, hey, I'm I'm gonna text away. Okay, come on, come on. Lord's ice cream. You know about that? Of course. Of course. I mean, this guy right here. Yeah, just there with Paula. I love this dude. Orange burger. Come on, man. Yep. Red onions. Red onions. onions. Colonial Donuts. Damn. Yes, sir. Y'all did a lot of eating. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Colonial. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Don't but no quarter pound, no quarter right. pound burgers was popping though. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. Uh, who had the pizza shop on High Street? Uh, Cybels. Cybels. Oh, Cybels. <laughs> Cybels. They had another one on Piedmont too. Did they really? Big slices. Big slices. Yeah. The big slices. Yeah. <sighs> Shout out to the town, man. Ryan Coogler, give a big round of applause. <laughs> Peter Nix. It was like an extra 10 minutes of just yeah, food references. Yeah, so <laughs> Y'all like, what are they talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm hungry. I'm Y'all know the tours of the town, man. Food tours. Man, you got it. Damn, man, the barbecue, the barbecue spot, the barbecue spot. Everton Jones. Everton Jones, damn it, you uh, better Jeff come on, Lennon. man. We're yeah. going to end on that note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you see Anthem Hum Wednesday, June 28th, all There right? you go, man. Thank Don't you, fellas, forget. for coming by. <laughs> <laughs> Sway the morning, Shade 4-5. <laughs>